Hello, I'm Rusty Nelson and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to do something really fun. I just got a Canon Pro 4000 44 inch printer and we're going to start it up, do a little work on the software, install the drivers. Let's get started. Pretty exciting day here. Get to start up a brand new Pro 4044 inch printer. I will say right away, um, it is pretty much going to be the same for the 2000, 4000, 6000, and the S models alike. Also, a lot from the 1000, but I did do a video on the 1000 that was pretty comprehensive. Please, you know the game. Please hit subscribe. Please hit uh, the little bell so that you can get notified of other videos that I'm doing. I'm not sponsored by anybody, so I don't spam anybody. Um, I'm not going to send out any emails, but you will get notified of new videos, and it really helps me out to get kind of lifted up in the YouTube world. If you would... When you have questions, uh, remarks, please don't send them to me personally. Put them in the remarks below because I just don't have time to answer individual questions and I end up getting the same repeat questions over and over again. I also have a Facebook page and RustyNelson.com. You can please sign up through those and Instagram all through RustyNelson.com and there's also a blog. Anyway, let's get started on this thing because I'm pretty excited. First thing I'm going to do is pull off a lot of this stuff and I'm not going to bore you with it until I get to some stuff that's a little interesting. This right here is a clip that holds a belt and they want you to hold on to this simply because if you want to transport it, this will help to lock down. The next step is to actually plug it in. Woohoo! Here we go, folks. And that's one good sign. We are actually in New York time zone. Select OK and start by referring to the setup guide instructions. And if this is anything like the Pro 1000, it's going to walk you through everything step by step. I'll show you installing one ink and then we'll move on. I already installed the PM ink and the red lights on. To install it, you need to shake this six or seven times and the manual actually says, notice these are very small cartridges. It actually says that you may want to order more ink quickly, that this is only used to start the machine up. And I'm sure when we go to take a look at the level of ink used, we are going to realize that to be true. Nothing really gets forced here. And that's about it. I'm going to run through the rest of these really quick. And then I'm actually going to go and order some more ink. Here we are, the last one. Click that down. It says pull ink tack level over towards you. Still talking about that. Probably wants us to close the last one. And hopefully this will move on. Following genuine ink tanks have been installed. Hit OK we are going to install the head. Release print head lock lever. Now, the thing is about the, the head itself actually does have some ink in it, so uh, kind of watch what you're doing with that. 
the orange oh there you go so yes it definitely does have uh, ink in there take the covers off make sure you do that big thing is is you don't want to touch anything here and you definitely don't want to lay this down on the table Close the cover. Select paper on which to print. Uh, do the print head alignment. They give you uh, paper that's already in there. And we're going to go ahead and load that. Next step is after you open the top is to lift the release lever. Next up, insert paper into the manual feed slot with the printing side facing up. Paper that it comes with, so you know, has a fold this way, and the printing side is the side once you open it up like this, is facing upward. If you look in here, there's two lines actually. There's a line right here, and there's a line right here, and that's where we're going to align the paper. Now you've got to make sure you put it in portrait the long way this way. As soon as you do this, it knows that you've put that in there. Take this, line this up here along the top, and then right, scooch it over to the right, then we lower. And just make sure, double check once you do that. Select media type. Right on the paper, it will tell you, hopefully you can see that, right here, HW coded HD paper. Sometimes you get different types of paper, but we're going to proceed to look for this. So coated paper and HW coated HG and now feeding the paper. I just went around back and connected the wired LAN connection now, once again, I am running an ethernet cable out of my PC and it's in a switch box and split between my 9120, my 1000, and my 4000. The big thing to remember is you do not connect if you are using a USB right now. Make sure you read that and make sure you understand that. Do you want to connect a computer to the printer with a wired LAN. Yes. Connect the ethernet cable. We already did. Now, when I hit that, you could definitely hear it click. And it says, filling the print head with ink. Do not turn off power. Meanwhile, set the computer or smartphone, etc. See setup guide and continue with operation. Now I have to say, I've talked to tech support three times get it three times and each time I've gotten a different answer to this. I hate to say that Canon, but you really need to get on the ball with your tech support and setting up this printer. They should have this down cold. Here is the instructions right now. Okay. I was told it says to type in ij.start.canon. If you do that into your browser bar, it takes you to an Asian website. So this is what I was told to do since I already have the media configuration tool and the other software plugged in there was while this was going on, go and download the drivers for the 4000. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's see what happens. Right now what I'm going to do is jump on to the Canon website and this gives you the most up-to-date drivers for your unit. This is a fairly simple process. Just type in Canon Pro 4000 software and make sure that you're on the proper country site and make sure you're at a Canon site and not some other strange site. 
But this is where you're going to find out all your information individually for the 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 6,000. Go ahead and hit Drivers and Downloads. Look for the regular driver for the Pro 4000. Install the regular Pro 4000 driver first. Then we're going to install the XPS driver. You always want to install the XPS driver after the regular driver and you cannot operate just the XPS driver without having the regular Pro Series 4000 driver installed. Now you may see something on there that says the complete software package. And in fact, it actually may have a earlier date and you're sitting there going, well, how can it be a complete package if the other drivers are newer? It will actually go back in and go find on the server the newer updates. But once again, we're going to go for the regular driver first for the Pro 4000. Obviously, if you have a 1, 2, or 6, that's the page that you'll be on. Go ahead and hit select, and you'll get a description of that driver. Go down for Windows, hit Open When Done. Now we just wait for the download, and that's about it. Obviously, if you're on a Mac, it'll be slightly different, but you're just going to open up this driver package. Now, once it's uploaded, go ahead and click on it to open it, and you'll run through this pretty quick. There's not much to tell here, just your normal click-throughs to get you to install it. We're actually getting ready to set up the communication type between the printer. I will be setting this up with a wired LAN through an Ethernet cable if you're using a wireless or a USB, select that and click Next. You will see Deactivate the Block. Keep this checked. You need to do this and it will reactivate it once it starts up again. Hit Automatic Search. It will find the printer for you. And there it is. This is my printer. So this is a happy day when this happens. If you hit update, it'll go out and research for printers again. Next, with the Pro 4000 highlighted, it is looking to find the printer that you are actually trying to connect to. Registering the printer driver. And here it is. The setup is complete. It's actually that easy. I don't want to set this as my default printer. So I'll just hit complete. And now we're going to go do the XPS driver. It's exactly the same as what we just did. So I'm not going to run through the whole upload. If you take a look at the description, it says optional. This is an advanced printer driver. XPS printer drivers support 16-bit versus 8-bit, allowing for a smooth gradation. Personally, I always use the XPS driver and we'll go ahead and jump through this really quick. Go back to the printer drivers and see that both are loaded. You have the XPS loaded and regular 4000 loaded. One thing we want to do is keep our printer drivers, the information that's on the printers, synced up together. And we're going to do this through the media configuration tool. Let's jump back to the Canon website and go to Drivers and Downloads. And you want to download, among other things, now I don't want to get into this in detail. If you subscribe to my channel, I will be updating this and going through in detail the media configuration tool, doing um, color calibration, and I'm not talking about ICC profiles or your monitor. We're talking about actually calibrating the printer to a piece of paper. And that's one of those real tweak, fine-tune things. But let's talk about the media configuration tool. I've already downloaded mine. So what I want to do is try to show you through a drawing what exactly is going to happen here. So here goes. Let's jump on over to Photoshop for a second. My little magic drawing board. We're going to look at what we just downloaded the media configuration tool. This is what we're going to call this. So this, sorry about my drawing. This is software. Then we have our PC, which has our printer driver. We also have our printer.
And in each of these, in our driver and our printer, we have information stored, such as the media that we're going to use. When the printer comes and you unload it, it has a certain amount of media on there. Now, as we all know, it's probably outdated. So what we're going to do is we're going to start up the media configuration tool. It's going to go out to the net and it's going to find all the updates to your media. It's going to display that information on there for your specific printer, which for me right now is the 4000. Then it's going to go back and it's going to compare what it found on the internet to what's on the printer. And it's going to give you the option to update your printer. And that could mean uh, deleting, adding, or updating. And that's going to be the first thing we're going to do. Then it gives us a choice of what to do. And we're going to go through the process of the media configuration tool is going to send that information that we tell it to and it's going to sync your printer to the current information and the information you want on there. Then what's going to happen is it's going to ask do you want to update the drivers? So the brain over here is going to say look you just updated your printer and you have all this new information over here now do you want me to take this information and update the driver itself and of course we want to do that the thing is remember we have two drivers over here we have the regular 4000 driver and we also have the XPS driver we need to update both of these individually and that's what we're going to do right now what a mess. But you need to do this to keep updated. Let's jump over to the media configuration tool. There's a bunch of things that are on here that we're not going to go over right now because, like I said, if you subscribe, I'm going to go into the media configuration tool and some of the other software more in depth at a later date. We're going to tell the media configuration tool, I want you to go out and I want you to search for my printers. And that's what it's doing right now. Here is the 1000 and the 4000. Jump over to the 4000, update that. Now it's talking to the computer and it's saying, hey computer, what in the world do you have stored on there as far as media? It'll say add and update. Right now it says add and save. Actually goes out and looks at your printer and compares what is out on the internet to what is on your printer. And you're going to see one of basically three things. That it's registered and updated in your printer. That it's not registered, meaning that this particular media type is not in the printer. Or the other, there's an update available. Take an update for each one of these. I don't want to change too much because I'm sure you don't want to sit here and go through this whole thing with me. <laughs> At a minimum, this is what you want to do, is update anything that's on there. That way you know everything that's on your printer has been updated. Hit Next and Start. The Media Information Printer will be updated. This process cannot be reversed. Don't let that scare you. It can be reversed, meaning that you can reload things. It, things don't go away, but if you do erase something, it's gone forever. And there we go. We are now updated properly, as it says. Do you want to update? And this is what I was talking about. So now we've taken and we've had the media configuration tool look at the printer and say, hey, printer, what do you have? Then it took the information that it had, went out to the Internet and compared it and said, hey, we've got some updates to do. 
And if you want to add or subtract anything, let me know. And that's what we just did. So now that information is actually sitting on the printer. Now the tool is saying, do you want to update the printer driver? Remember, we have an XPS driver and we have the regular 4000 driver or 1000, 2000, 6000, whatever you may have. Hit yes. We have two different drivers, XPS and 4000. Just click 4000 because I like doing things on the 4000, the regular driver first. Uh oh, now it comes up. Click update media information under printer properties. For a PC in the control panel, these are our drivers. Right click, printer properties, go to device settings. Down here it says update media information. Acquires media information from the printer and updates the media information of the driver. Execute. As I said in the drawing, it's going back out to the printer and it's saying, hey, I see some updates that need to be done. We're going to hit OK. Now it's acquiring the media from the printer. You don't want to touch a thing. And there we go. It has been updated and that actually took in real time about four minutes. So just to recap really quick, we installed the printer, we installed the drivers, we updated the drivers through the media configuration tool. Now we're going to jump into the quick utility box, which is kind of a way to get to different information. One thing we haven't covered is one of those tweaking things is color calibration, which is calibrating different media to the printer itself. But just a quick look. This right here is the way the ink levels look after a full installation. I have not printed anything yet. Maintenance cartridge. I always tell everybody, no matter what, have an extra maintenance cartridge on hand because it will stop dead in its tracks if you fill the maintenance cartridge up. So let's talk about a few more things and jump outside in the computer world. That turned out to be a little bit more comprehensive than what I expected and a little bit longer, but hey, we got the job done and I can't wait to start printing some real prints on it, which I will make more videos about if you subscribe and hit the notification and you will get notified about them. Remember, I'm not sponsored by anybody, so you won't be getting spam uh, from anything and you won't get any emails from me. Please, if you made it this far, put your remarks and questions down below because I won't have time to answer individual questions regarding this video. It's not that I don't want to, it just get, gets really laborsome going back over and over the same question. And I want other people to benefit from your questions because if you have them, that means somebody else probably has them. Anyway, my saying is, my camera is my best excuse for adventure and it seems to go to some of the really fun places around this world and I hope yours takes you on the same adventure because this printing is definitely one of them. I hope to see you out there.